students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that everybody is having a good start to their weekend. Uh, students, this class is an IELTS task to writing and the focus uh, is on traditional teaching. This will be the topic. This was actually requested by one of our viewers. Uh, I assume that uh, it is likely a question which was asked in one of the recent IELTS exams. Welcome Thang Pham and Chayang Kip, our newer members. Chayang Kip, it's nice to see you uh, join our membership. Welcome Carolina, our chat moderator. This is a members chat class. Everybody's welcome to watch. There's lots of learning to be had. The goal in this class is to talk about IELTS task to writing the essay, what it is, how to write it, how to get a high band score. This lesson is presented to you by uh, aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Uh, definitely check us out there. And for the general IELTS, uh, check us out at gieltshelp.com. The writing section between the academic and the general IELTS, uh, they're slightly different, but it's mostly for task one. Task two is very similar for both the academic and the general IELTS test. For academic IELTS learning, uh, please visit our website at aehelp.com. Uh, go to this website here and click on this big red button that's just above my head there, right there, um, to join our premium IELTS package. These websites, they are the textbooks uh, for these live classes, so you get access to all of the audio material, practice exams, video strategies that we use in these classes, so uh, it's good to join. Hi Lamia, hi Gunkai, um, Amra, nice to see more of you joining in. For the uh, general IELTS, it's gieltshelp.com and it's this green background here. Click that big red button. We are an official IDP affiliate, British Council partner, IELTS Test Registration Center. I'm a certified British Council agent, so you are in great hands uh, with us. And uh, we have this discount code for you to help you a little bit more. It's target nine, uh, T A R G E T nine, uh, to get a twenty percent discount off of that one-time payment. So uh, make sure to use that when you are uh, purchasing our premium IELTS course. Uh, students, um, we have apps for you. Uh, the apps are Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help. Search for those apps in your app store. You will see our uh, logos and then join those apps to the websites. Follow us on Instagram, IELTS underscore A Help, G IELTS Help for live class schedules, tips, strategies, vocabulary, and much, much more. And uh, if you have questions, or if you would like to get a free score on your writing, you can send us an essay and we will tell you what your band level is for free. Um, you can send that to adrian at aehelp.com. That's my uh, email address. All right, let's get into it. So uh, we've got uh, two classes for you today, um, this uh, writing task two and then uh, listening part three and four for subscribers and then tomorrow we'll have some uh, speaking classes we also have new videos for you on the YouTube channel I will uh, put that uh, video link into the chat um, so check that out all right uh, Lamia good luck on your exam tomorrow I see uh, that uh, you've got an exam coming up so Thumbs up. Uh, Lamia, when you do your exam, um, just stay calm, be you, be confident. You deserve to be there. You've studied hard. Um, and when you get your results, let us know. Come back. Make sure to uh, share your experience, okay? All right. Um, so, uh, writing task two. Uh, let's get into it. Um, the uh, IELTS writing section 
uh, is uh, one hour, so 60 minutes, okay, uh, two essays. Um, essay one, so task one, is an expository essay. Okay, um, today though, we're focusing on uh, task two. Um, what is task two? What type of essay, students? So there are basically four uh, major types of essays uh, in writing. Descriptive, which is kind of like the father of all. Uh, narrative, um, that's uh, a narration, telling a story, like a narrator, like once upon a time, there lived a king and a queen in a castle in a land far, far away. So that would be a narrative story. Uh, IELTS uh, task one for the uh, general version where you're writing a letter to the boss or a letter to your friend, that's usually a narrative. And then there's an expository, which is task one of the academic, where you are explaining and exposing. So you look at a graph or a chart and you explain what is happening. Um, that is called an expository uh, essay. And then task two for both the academic and the general test is known as a, what type of essay? Uh, Baljeet, uh, you got a little bit of confusion there. It's a persuasive essay. Um, Baljeet, argumentative essay and persuasive essay are basically the same. Um, in fact, argumentative essay is considered to be a type of persuasive essay. Okay, so there are different types of persuasive essays. Uh, to persuade and to argue are almost synonyms. Um, so careful not to confuse yourself on those. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a persuasive essay. Persuasive essay is where you persuade. Uh, persuade is to convince. Okay, absolutely, yeah. And uh, when you have a persuasive essay, Okay, um, if this is new for you, if you've never heard this before, if you're like, whoa, my mind is blown. Um, what? Persuasive essay, task two, I've never heard that before. Um, if that's happening for you right now, then uh, definitely uh, research uh, persuasive essay writing um, using, of course, Mother Google uh, as a first kind of step. So um, if this is new for you, then definitely research persuasive essay uh, writing uh, styles and rules, okay? Uh, it's very, very useful if this is new for you because there are some very clear uh, guidelines for that and it's not Adrian said this or that IELTS examiner on that YouTube channel said that or my IELTS teacher said that. No, it's basic standard 100 year old styles and rules to persuasive essay writing that exist in English literature. So um, if uh, persuasive essay, if this term is new for you, then uh, definitely uh, you want to check that out when you've got a little bit of time. I will show you how to write a persuasive essay, but uh, I will not go too far down that rabbit hole uh, just because uh, we could spend a whole uh, semester talking about um, essay writing styles and rules. So uh, persuasive essay, um, I mean I'll give you a little bit here. So um, you must have clear structure and logic to support your arguments. Um, you need to use affirmative language. So instead of uh, could, you should write can. Instead of maybe, 
you should write is okay so that's just one quick tip on how to make your persuasive essays better if you're writing words like could be maybe should be um, then you need to change those to affirmative language which are is uh, can shall okay so uh, use affirmative language all right so good okay um, so let's get into this task too I will go through this with you step by step um, with each of the paragraphs the introductory paragraph body paragraph one two uh, conclusion I will uh, outline the steps we're going to do this together it's an interactive class it's an interactive lesson so uh, step number one is read the question carefully and paraphrase it and paraphrase it to make sure you understand it you should never write an argumentative or persuasive essay or any kind of essay for that matter without first understanding what you are writing about it's very difficult to uh, convince someone of an idea where you the writer uh, him or herself does not know the idea right so uh, read the question um, and uh, paraphrase it to make a hundred percent sure that you are writing about the right ideas okay so that is your first step so let's do that um, this is a nice and short question and again this question was requested uh, by uh, one of our uh, viewers I think maybe one of our members and this is just a reminder members that you can request essay questions okay as this is a reminder you should know this when you look at your perks uh, on the channel uh, even level one has this perk of course all the other three levels have it as members uh, you can request a uh, task one and task two topics for live classes so keep that in mind members okay thumbs up yeah I bet some of you have had questions that you wanted me to discuss in these live classes so definitely send them to me just email them to me okay to the email address I showed you before okay um, so uh, let's uh, take a look at this and um, paraphrase it first of all let's read it right so uh, here we go um, IELTS task to writing uh, the typical teaching situation of a teacher and students in the class will not exist by the year 2050 to what extent do you agree or disagree all right question seems simple enough but just to be sure let's still paraphrase and uh, think about this a little bit before we uh, jump in and uh, start writing okay Sanjay I am doing fantastic uh, you are just in time to begin the essay all right so uh, let's um, uh, paraphrase this first of all so uh, 250 words minimum absolutely uh, band 8 band 9 essays are more than 250 words they're 300 350 words so um, here we go All right. All 
Yeah. So using synonyms, uh, using some uh, expressions, I basically took the original question and I paraphrased it. Let me move it up a little bit so you can see it a little bit clearer. Uh, so do the same thing. I can see Chai and Kip that you're doing it, which is good. Um, here we go. So the typical teaching situation, I paraphrase this as the traditional teaching environment. There are lots of different ways to paraphrase, okay? If you're having trouble paraphrasing, use your thesaurus, use a dictionary, learn to paraphrase. It's an essential skill for a good band score on the IELTS exam. Um, of a teacher and students, um, I paraphrase that as of an instructor and peers. Um, peers actually is not the best word. Um, what's a better word, students, than peers? So instructor is okay uh, for uh, teacher, but peers is not really the right word now that I'm looking at it. Um, I should replace that word with another word that also starts with a P. Um, peers are like classmates, but we're not really talking about classmates here. We're talking about students. That's right, Lamia. Very good. You get my thumbs up. Good. Yeah, Amra. Very good. Pupils. Yeah, pupils is the better word. Pupils. Pupils are students. Another way to say it. It's a synonym. Okay. Um, and then in the class, um, that for me, I just said in a classroom. I think it's uh, even better to say classroom than class because then you really have that visual of the room, right? Uh, will no longer be commonplace. Uh, not exist. No longer be commonplace. Okay. And then 2050. Well, I mean, right now we're in 2022. So we're really talking about 28 years, but just to kind of round that number. Um, we'll say after about 30 years or three decades, right? And then to what extent do you agree or disagree is basically asking me to what degree um, do you believe this to be true or false? All right, um, yeah. Let's, um, let's discuss it. Okay, um, so... We've got a good paraphrase. Let me see what uh, some of you did before I jump into the next step. So this is um, Chai and Kip here. Uh, I'm glad you became our member. That was good. Uh, okay. So let's uh, make it a little bit bigger, Chai and Kip, and then we'll go from there. Um, so uh, it is considered that studying process between student and teacher will not appear five decades later. Um, Chai and Kip, you've got a few mistakes here. You have to be really careful. This is not accurate to the question. Um, the studying process between student and teacher will probably exist. Uh, I mean, we're doing that right now, right? I'm teaching, you're learning. But this is definitely not traditional teaching. It's not what we've been doing over the last um, few hundred years where you're sitting in the same room as me where I'm looking at you, right? Um, here I'm looking at your avatars, I'm looking at your writing, I'm looking at a computer screen, so are you, and we're in different parts of the world. So um, we're still in a studying process between student and teacher, we're just not in this traditional teaching environment. This is a very important part of this, Chai and Kip, so you need to really make sure that, um, that you've paid attention to that. I don't see that in your paraphrasing. Um, so it is considered that um, the classic face-to-face -face, uh, studying process in the classroom or in a classroom uh, between student and teacher will not um, take place, not appear as a bit off, not take place, and not five decades later because that would be 2070. So you have to be careful with your um, with your details, Chan Kip. It's three decades later, right? We're in 2020, not in 2000. So um, yeah, I see that you corrected that there with the smiley face. So you need to be accurate. 
okay? Um, mistakes like that in the IELTS exam when you're writing will cost you. They will lower your band score because it will affect your coherence score. And when you get up into the band six, seven, eight uh, score category in the IELTS, it's a lot more about your coherence than it is about um, using a certain kind of word or connective, okay? So careful, careful. Uh, James, let's take a look at what you wrote. Okay, nice to see all the contributions today. Um, James writes, the uh, traditional teaching of a teacher and learning of pupils uh, will not be available um, in the year 2050. I would, um, yeah, it's pretty good, James. Um, uh, I would make a slight correction here, will not be a available uh, following. So rather than specifically in 2050, it's 2050 and beyond, okay? Uh, do you agree or disagree? Um, careful with this, do you agree or disagree? Uh, this is not exactly the same as um, to what extent do you agree? Okay. So it's not the same. Uh, sometimes um, you will have a very different answer for that. Do you agree or disagree? It's one or the other. Um, to what extent do you agree? It's more of a scale, right? You can completely agree. You can somewhat agree um, with this. So uh, careful, James, it's not uh, exactly the same question. Do you agree or disagree or to what extent uh, do you agree? So pay attention to that. You will have different answers. Sometimes the answers would be similar, but sometimes they'll be very different, okay? All right, Sanjay, let's check it out. Jumping right in there, good. So Sanjay says, or writes, um, the traditional, okay, the traditional way of learning will not be available uh, in uh, roughly 30 years. We don't need the next. Uh, do you not favor this notion or support it? Do you favor this or, uh, okay, do you dispute, not favor, it's a bit weird. Do you dispute uh, this notion or support it? Okay, much better. All right, um, that's looking good, Sanjay. It's kind of close, it's simple. You've simplified it. Make sure you realize that you've simplified it, but, uh, but it's not bad, okay? All right. Uh, Amra, so we'll take a look at these paraphrasings, move through it nicely. Okay, uh, Amra writes, um, it is considered that today's teaching environment of a tutor and pupils in a classroom will no longer be available after about three decades. To what degree do you believe this is true or false? Amra, that's very similar to what I wrote. It's good, it works. Um, Baljeet writes, the traditional way of tutoring for learners and tutors is not going to stay in the next three decades. Um, is not going to persist after three decades, Baljeet. Okay. Um, how much do you support this? I, it's, I think it's strange to say Baljeet consensus to this. Okay, so it's a little bit off. Baljeet Arjun, welcome to our group of members. Thank you for joining. Okay, um, so we have our paraphrase. Um, and uh, now, uh, once we have that, we want to identify the topic and the controlling idea. So step two is uh, identify the topic and the uh, controlling ideas. Okay, uh, so what's the topic here? What are we talking about? In this case, it should be fairly straightforward. Okay. Uh, 
what are we what are we discussing in this essay you should never um, jump over this step it's a very important step okay so topic equals yeah very good Sanjay classroom learning traditional classroom learning or teaching right sure yep absolutely um, Amra um, teaching method I think is okay as well so if you got teaching method I think you're on the right track yeah you could think about it that way uh, controlling idea okay um, so what's the controlling idea what do you think yeah teaching style is okay Gunkai Ren or classroom learning Baljeet that works for a uh, topic as well um, we are focusing on the traditional classroom learning so we're specifically talking about or writing about traditional classroom learning so definitely make sure you're focused on that and the controlling idea is the existence of uh, traditional classroom learning in uh, 30 years or you could think about it as the uh, style of teaching in 30 years right and the reasons for it okay all right um, so uh, let's um, let's ask a little bit of what why how so uh, we're going to go through this nice and fast I want to focus a little bit more on the actual essay writing uh, today so um, just uh, follow with me here um, step three is to think critically um, about the topic and the controlling idea okay so when you're practicing this at home this is what you should do is think critically about the uh, topic and uh, controlling idea um, that you identified in uh, step two okay and that means basically that you can ask uh, what uh, why and how for each okay so let me show you what I mean um, basically we go okay what is a traditional uh, classroom uh, learning okay the answer to that is um, it is a teacher in a physical uh, classroom with a group of students uh, teaching face-to-face uh, -face. okay um, why do we have this so why um, do we have this traditional classroom learning okay so uh, why uh, does this uh, type of learning exist this is a really good question actually um, as I was typing this I really started to think I'm like yeah why why do we have this um, and um, here when you're thinking about these because I, I came up with an answer I, th I think is pretty clever um, it's very important to visualize Okay, so picture the traditional classroom. Um, so why why does this type of learning exist? So Lamia says that it's effective. So it is an effective uh, form of learning. Sure. Uh, let's see if you come up with some other answers as well. 
Uh, Sanjay says, because there's no tech, it increases literacy rate. Um, Sanjay, don't think about the what doesn't happen. Think about the what does happen. Okay. Uh, Baljeet says that it's it's much more interactive. Um, okay. Mm, sure. I think that there are still some other ideas um, that are uh, very important here. So um, let me ask you this, and this is a really good question here that you know I think we need to uh, pinpoint. We need to think about. Um, when you think about a traditional, um, so I'm going to kind of go a different direction here. When you think about a traditional classroom, what do you see? Okay, and I want you to be specific here. So be specific. Okay. So... Amra is saying um, students are learning under the supervision of a teacher. Yeah. So it is supervised learning. That's a very good point, Amra. So when you think about a traditional, and I bet, you know, we've, we, could, we should all be able to see this because we all experienced it, I believe. So what do you actually see? When you think about a traditional classroom, what do you imagine? What do you see? Sanjay says, a school, a class, a chair, a classmate, and teachers. Okay, so... All right, um, think about this, all right? I see my grade six class, all of us 12 years old, learning about exponents in uh, math class from the teacher. I think that was about the time we started learning about exponents or certain types of equations, we could say as well, right? Um, in math from the teacher. So when I really start to visualize this, and this is the power of visualization, students, I can't emphasize enough how important that is for your learning and for your use of English and to get those high band scores, to, to visualize, to really imagine, see information. So I actually see my grade six class, all of us are 12 or 13 years old. Um, we're all learning about equations in math class from the teacher in English, right? So, uh, now, if I go back to this question, why does this type of learning exist? Then um, one of my answers would be um, it is an effective form of learning because students share uh, common features like age uh, and uh, skill level and uh, learn um the same materials okay so i think that's one of the reasons that we kind of develop this style of teaching um, around the world is because uh, we have a group of similar students that can now learn effectively from one teacher who is targeting more or less their age group their interests their skills okay Okay, good. Um, and then how, right? So how does it happen? And this is, uh, if you can't answer the why question, you might answer the how question and then you'll think of the, um, of the why question a little bit easier after the how question, okay? So how does it happen? Students go to a class for a specific uh, time, uh, sit at desks, and learn from a teacher that delivers uh, materials 
um, for a specific amount of time. For like, let's say six hours, right, in the learning day. So it's really good, even though, you know, we think we know what traditional teaching is, it's really good to define it, okay, because that will become a part of our essay, all right? Okay, now we want to think what, why, how. Um, so uh, let's ask this question then from ourselves, okay? So why uh, would the uh, traditional classroom uh, exist after 2050. Okay. So what do you think? Um, why, why would um, the traditional classroom continue to exist um, after 2050? So this would be our uh, disagree, right? So why might it not disappear? Why might we not all go virtual and learn just through YouTube like you're doing right now or uh, learn through apps on the phone um, or virtual learning or learning from software? So why, why might we kind of maintain or hold on to uh, classroom learning? Yeah, there's a missing S there. Exists. Duh. Yes. Sanjay S. Typing too fast. Thank you for that. Okay, so why might it continue to exist and not disappear? I don't know about globalization, Chai and Kip. I think that's uh, maybe a bit of a tough one. I think there's easier. So think about the easiest arguments for uh, the continued existence of the traditional classroom. Uh, Baljeet says it cannot be replaced by any means. What cannot be replaced, Baljeet? So what is important in the traditional classroom? Yeah, Sanjay says it's an effective method. Exactly, because it forces students to concentrate on their studies, okay? All right, I agree. Okay, so uh, that's one uh, reason. So it forces the students to learn, right? You don't have uh, distractions in the classroom. It's more focused. All right, so like with uh, a lot of activities, you need to create an environment to be effective for that uh, activity, right? And we want an effective environment, okay? Exactly. All right, um, yeah, and... Um, I agree. Um, so it promotes uh, intellectual um, relationships, right? With your peers and with um, teachers, exactly. So that's important, right? Um, who wrote that? Somebody wrote that. Yeah. Carolina says humans are social creatures and we need to interact. I think, Carolina, you're writing kind of the same idea. Important relationships for intellectual and emotional. Yeah, so that's kind of another um, important part of the classroom situation, right? As we create uh, friendships, we create uh, relationships uh, among each other. And for that to be for that to happen, um, that we need to be in the same room. It's very difficult to do that uh, virtually or much more difficult. Okay, so this would be a disagree. Um, why would the traditional classroom 
uh, not exist um, after 2050. So this would be the agree. Okay, um, because technology is replacing the need to uh, travel to a classroom. I'm sure many of you thought about that, okay? Um, and uh, some of you might argue that uh, it is uh, more efficient uh, to learn um, in a virtual environment. Uh, less travel time, better teachers, right? Possibly, okay? Now, um, we could go either way. So we could write an essay that says, I agree that it will not exist. Um, or I could write an essay that's disagree. I think that it will exist, traditional classrooms. Um, and um, here, the question is, uh, to what extent, right? So um, now think about this logically, okay? Uh, it either exists or it doesn't, okay? So the question here is to what extent do you agree or disagree that the uh, traditional teaching situation, this is the original question here, okay? So here, logically, okay, it's either one or the other. You can't kind of agree, okay? Um, it wouldn't make a very good essay because it either exists or it doesn't exist, right? So you have to kind of stick to one side in this one, okay? Now, me personally, I'm going to think uh, from my um, opinion, that's why it's a persuasive essay, right? And I will argue that they will exist. And if anybody would like, we can take bets, but I bet that in 2050, we will still have traditional classrooms. They might not be as popular as in past decades, but I think that we will still find a lot of schools around the world where students actually go into a classroom. So, Uh, Chai and Kip says, could save the environment so we don't need to buy paper books. Uh, yeah, but that Chai and Kip, that's not connected to traditional teaching. Even now, students go into the classroom with laptops and tablets and don't use paper books as much anymore. So that's not connected to the environment so much. That's more the tools for learning. So that would not be a good point uh, for your argument, okay? So after thinking critically about this, I come up with my thesis statement. And this is my thesis statement. Again, I want to spend uh, the rest of the time writing this essay, everybody, and seeing your answers. So I'm going to go with the um, agree, uh, or sorry, disagree side, okay? So, All right, I completely disagree with the notion that the, that the traditional classroom will no longer exist after three decades because the uh, efficiency and social aspect of face-to-face uh, -face learning with uh, peers is a, a crucial part of human uh, development, okay? Um, so this would be my thesis statement uh, based on the information that we discussed, all right? 
you need to come up with a good thesis statement for a good essay and to get a good band score. So I will lend you my thesis statement for this class. We can work on this essay together. Um, I completely disagree. So I don't slightly agree or slightly disagree, but I completely, it's an easier approach. It will make a better essay. I completely disagree with the notion that the traditional classroom will no longer exist after three decades because the efficiency and social aspect of face-to-face -face learning with peers is a crucial part of human development. Okay, um, so what are my two points? Efficiency is one point and social aspect, okay, is the second point, right? Makes sense so far? All right. Uh, now, um, let's, um, let's write the essay. So let's just get into it, okay? The essay is four paragraphs. Introduction, body one, body two, and conclusion all right so the introduction um, it should have a hook background and a thesis okay the hook is a simple sentence that introduces the topic in an interesting way to capture the reader's attention okay so the topic here is uh, the traditional teaching style okay all right um, and so I want to write a simple sentence with that for my introduction, okay? All right, there's my hook. The traditional style of classroom teaching has been a part of global culture for centuries. Hopefully that will catch uh, my reader's attention. All right. Okay, uh, Sanjay, that is the advantages of traditional learning, right? Um, yeah, exactly, Sanjay. So uh, the reason why I completely disagree with the statement is because of two advantages of traditional learning, which will ensure the longevity of the traditional learning style well past 2050. Okay, Chai and Kip says, I totally disagree with this statement and think that direct learning should be held than the modern learning style. Um, that doesn't make much sense to me. Chai and Kip, I don't know what the modern learning style is that you're talking about, and I'm not sure what you mean by direct learning. So you have to be very careful on what words you use, okay? Uh, the traditional uh, style of classroom teaching has been a part of global culture for centuries. That's my hook. That introduces the topic, okay? And then background, what is that? Uh, millions of students go to uh, school, uh, sit in class with their uh, peers and learn um, specific subjects from their instructors. This classic learning has been challenged by um, advancements 
in technology. such as learning um, virtually or with software assistance. Okay, that's the importance of the question. It's the background. Um, now, uh, members, I'm uh, showing you the introduction here based on the hook, the background, the thesis, and I'm writing at a good pace here to kind of show you the writing fluency that needs to happen once you have your ideas, once you've planned your essay. Uh, the background, okay, um, the second part that I just wrote, that's basically a definition and importance. So um, when you think about the background, think about the definition of the topic and the reason for the question. Okay. So why, you know, why are we asking this question? Why, are, why is uh, somebody at IELTS saying, hey, well, traditional learning might disappear, right? Well, obviously, it's because certain types of technology are challenging the traditional learning environment or competing with the uh, traditional learning environment. So um, here, I make that clear for my reader. I make it clear why this essay is here, why I'm writing this essay, right? So the traditional style of classroom teaching has been a part of global culture for centuries. Millions of students go to school, sit in a class with their peers, and learn specific subjects from their instructors. This classic learning has been challenged by advancements in technology, such as learning virtually or with software assistance. Great, now comes my thesis. And the thesis, of course, is the point of argument. Or points of argument, because I have two of them in this case, right? Which will make my uh, body paragraph, okay? So here is uh, my thesis, and I can just uh, plop it right in there. So I can, just like that, um, stick it in there. And now I have a good introductory uh, paragraph. Good introduction, good essay, good band score. Bad introduction, bad essay, low band score, okay? Uh, keep that in mind. So um, again, here is uh, the introduction for this question. Now, at home, when you're practicing members, you should always look at the original question and then um, read your introduction after you read the question. So uh, it's good to review each paragraph as you finish writing it, and that's a good strategy uh, for the uh, IELTS exam as well. So. Um, during your real IELTS, you should uh, read each paragraph as you finish writing it. Make sure it is clear and accurate to the question. Okay? So, very important this is the right way to review your work. So here's the original question, IELTS task to writing. The typical teaching situation of a teacher and students in the class will not exist by the year 2050. To what extent do you agree or disagree? The traditional style of classroom teaching has been a part of global culture for centuries. Millions of students go to school, sit in a class with their peers, and learn specific subjects from their instructors. This classic learning has been challenged by advancements in technology, such as learning virtually or with software assistance. I completely disagree with the notion that the traditional classroom will no longer exist after three decades because of the efficiency and social aspect of face-to-face -face learning with peers is a crucial uh, part of human development.
Okay. All right. Uh, let's see what you have for um, these parts of your essay. Okay. All right. Uh, Baljeet, your hook. Uh, traditional learning has been in use for almost a couple of centuries. Um, probably more than that now. I think it started in the 1700s for sure, but even before then. I mean, um, some cultures, they've been doing it for a thousand years. So uh, I think um, uh, Cambridge is considered the oldest university in the world, and it's been around for like 500 years or something. So um, Baljeet, um, let's uh, fix this a little bit. It's a good good attempt, Baljeet, um, for the hook. It's nice and short. So traditional learning um, has been not in use. It's a bit of a strange way to say it. Has been around or in practice uh, for um, now. <laughs> Remember what I said, um, Baljeet, about affirmative language? I made that point earlier in today's lesson. Don't use could be, would be, should be. So don't use the word almost. Okay. So traditional learning has been in practice for a couple of centuries. Okay. Or you could say for several centuries. Okay, that's a better hook. It's clean, it's clear, it's more accurate, okay? All right, um, Mal, uh, when we think about the future of education, one cannot dismiss the possibility of complete annihilation of the traditional way of teaching and replacing it with other method like virtual classes. Whew, Mal, I hope I don't have to read your essay out loud. It's going to be a lot of effort. Um, Maul, concise. Be concise. Okay. Um, too fancy, too confusing. Okay. Fancy does not get you great band scores necessarily if it's uh, confusing. Um, it's a lot of information in there, Maul. And I think you could write that sentence with about half as many words. So um, you should rewrite it. Okay. In a concise way. I love how you have good English. I love how you have good vocabulary. Use it effectively. Okay. Gunkai Ren. Uh, the traditional type of classroom teaching has come into being for centuries. Um, Gunkai Ren. Come into being is um, one uh, point in time. So it's a not the correct way to use that expression. Um, so has existed for centuries. Okay. Students, this is a very important tip. Okay. Do not overcomplicate your writing unnecessarily in the IELTS. You will get lower marks. Okay. So um, so this is a very important tip. Okay. Um, do not overcomplicate your writing unnecessarily. You will get lower marks because your essay will be more confusing. Okay. Uh, remember, students, you're not writing for yourself. You're writing for an audience. Does that make sense? Yeah, thumbs up. So you can simplify, okay? Gunkai Ren, um, you can simplify that, right? The traditional type of classroom teaching has existed for centuries and to come into being, okay? Uh, Baljeet, learners in the past had classes under a tree with only a teacher, which has now changed in big classes and students go to these classes and learn about their favorite subjects from a tutor. Whew, Baljeet, same as uh, Mall, um, shorter, okay?
okay? Uh, I'm not sure why you are writing about sitting under a tree, okay? I know that that existed a long time ago, but that's still kind of the same. It's a classroom. It's um, too much information, okay? We don't need to uh, have our reader visualize students sitting under a tree, okay? Sunantha, uh, the traditional uh, classroom teaching has been a part of culture for centuries. Good. Okay. Um, Chayan Kip, uh, the traditional teaching has been in use in almost every country in the world for centuries. Yeah, Chayan Kip, better. Not every countries, but every country. Every one, right? So it's just singular. Okay. Uh, Baljeet, I completely agree with the notion of these classes will be replaced by software assistance and virtual classes. Why, Baljeet? That is not a thesis on its own. Okay? That's not a thesis. Be very careful, Baljeet. Um, that's just an opinion without a thesis. Okay? A thesis, Baljeet, when you think about a thesis, and this is for everybody, it should always answer the why question. Why will it replace traditional teaching? So just saying that it will replace traditional teaching is an unfounded opinion. Okay. Uh, James says, the traditional activities of classroom teaching has been fundamental to global education for centuries. Good. Yeah. James, I like it. It's a good hook. Okay. Gets me reading. I like the concept of fundamental. Yeah, and because you're starting to make me think, the reader, of why is it fundamental? Why is traditional teaching fundamental to education? Okay, and I think it's a very good starting point. And then James writes, millions of students are going to their classrooms uh, with laptops and tablets. This typical learning has been replaced by developments in uh, technology such as online learning with the support of software. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna grab everything that you have here, James, because I think that you are on the right track. You're writing a different essay than me, but you are writing a good essay. You have uh, the right elements. So uh, this is James here. Let me try to kind of get some of these uh, parts out and then you can see what's going on. Yeah, James, I like it. Okay, you put everything up there. This is your goal, um, members. This is what you want to write, okay? So this is James here. And you can see, you'll when you, when you are writing a good essay, you can kind of feel that you're writing a good essay. Okay, so this is James's introductory paragraph. It's different than mine. Kind of the same concept, but definitely different. Definitely his writing. Okay, so James writes, the traditional activities of classroom teaching has been fundamental uh, to uh, global education for centuries. Now Grammarly is saying there's a better way to write this. We can write it this way. Uh, the traditional uh, classroom teaching activities have been fundamental to global education for centuries. Basically, it's still the same, James. And then uh, background, um, millions of students are going to their classroom um, just with laptops and tablets. This typical learning has been replaced um, by developments in technology such as online learning or with support of software. I strongly disagree with this notion that classic classrooms will be no longer suitable because the efficiency and interactive factor of face-to-face -face are vital uh, for human development. Yeah, so it, I mean, it's fairly similar to mine, James, but it's the right idea, okay? All right, um, so uh, now um, we can write about body paragraph one, okay? So body one uh, will deal with the efficiency. Okay, body paragraphs uh, students uh, have a topic sentence, explanation, and example. Okay.
All right. Um, so here we go. I'm going to write about the efficiency, and this is based on what we already discussed during the planning phase, why these traditional classrooms are simply just a very efficient way of learning. Now, here's a really important tip, students. Pay attention to this, okay? I'm not going to focus on the traditional classroom is more efficient than learning with software or learning um, through the computer at home, okay? So your arguments, good arguments, should always be written from the positive side. So my focus here is why traditional classrooms are efficient, not that they're more efficient than learning through a computer at home, okay? So, um, Okay, so this is my topic sentence. And the topic sentence is a deeper definition of uh, my first point. My first point is that traditional uh, teaching, traditional classrooms are more efficient, right? And here is a definition of that. Students in physical schools can gain much information quickly because they are forced to concentrate on their studies through supervision and group work, okay? Now, what do I mean by that? So here I need the explanation, okay? So, um, Okay, uh, so what do I mean, right? Well, visualizing it. You can see the students sitting there and you see the teacher kind of looking at the students, paying attention to what they're doing. Unfortunately, <laughs> I can't do that, right? So I don't know if uh, Baljeet um, is currently uh, also <laughs> playing a game of PUBG while listening to me and uh, trying to acquire a uh, new weapon. Um, and I'm not sure if uh, James is uh, making a uh, cheese sandwich um, or a bowl of noodles at the same time as uh, he is listening to me. Or I'm not sure if uh, Arjun is uh, having a conversation with uh, one of his friends simultaneously using WhatsApp, right? I can't control this. But if you are sitting in a classroom with me, I certainly can control that a lot more, a lot better, uh, and I can see a lot more of what's going on. Even if we had cameras, even if we were talking to each other, you could easily be multitasking, definitely much easier than if you were sitting in a classroom with me, right? So these parts I can't control. So I have to kind of you know, keep this in mind, and it's these visualizations, it's these um, pictures, it's this imagination that allows me to write the explanation and the examples, okay? All right, <clears throat> so Baljeet says, ha ha, but sir, I'm writing my essay too. 
All right. Are you playing PUBG then, Baljeet? Is that what you're telling me? All right. So, um, so you know, it's definitely in this way. It's uh, more controlled. It's more supervised, right? And of course, in this class, don't forget, most of you are adult learners, I'm sure. Um, but when you're dealing with a ten-year-old, it's a very different um, situation, right? So uh, the teacher in a classroom can make sure that pupils are not distracted by off-topic activities. Um, and working together with classmates ensures that each student is motivated to learn new knowledge. Okay. Indeed, in a classroom... when um, a student is drawing sketches in their notebook, the teacher um, will regain their attention uh, by giving them a warning. Okay, this level of efficiency is one reason that traditional uh, learning will persist. Okay. Persist means to continue uh, happening, okay? All right, so that's my first body paragraph, okay? So students in physical schools can gain much information quickly because they are forced to concentrate on their studies through supervision and group work. The teacher in a classroom can make sure that pupils are not distracted by off-topic activities and working together with classmates ensures that each student is motivated to learn new knowledge. Indeed, in a grade 6 classroom, when a student is drawing sketches in their notebook, the teacher will regain their attention by giving them a warning. This level of efficiency is one reason that traditional learning will persist. Okay. Body paragraph one, done. Topic sentence, explanation, example, and this last part here, you probably noticed, is my connecting sentence, right? So I'm basically saying this level of efficiency is one reason that traditional learning will persist, okay? Um, no, physical school, Chayang Kip, is not PE. PE means physical education, okay? So PE equals physical education. So that would be confusing. So don't confuse it with physical education. Good question, Chayang Kip. No, it's not PE. PE, especially when we're talking about schools, means physical education. All right, um, so uh, while I'm doing this, while I'm writing, uh, you should also be writing, definitely not playing PUBG or uh, watching a movie or even making a sandwich. I don't care that you're hungry. Don't make a sandwich, um, right? <laughs> and, 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 you know, jokes aside, uh, that is a physical classroom. Whether somebody is hungry or has some other issue, as long as it's not a big problem, they have to deal with it. You have to focus on your studies and not be distracted by other needs, right? They have uh, lunchtime uh, at schools. They have recess at schools for eating. So yes, humans can multitask, but when we multitask, we lose efficiency, right? We take away efficiency, okay? And I think that's what's happening with a lot of modern learning is that uh, everybody's trying to multitask so uh, it's not as efficient okay um so let's uh write body paragraph two body paragraph two is of course the social aspect of um traditional um learning okay 
Uh, here's a good question uh, for you. So, you know, when you're doing this kind of writing, um, of course, vocabulary is important because certain words have um, uh, very topic relevant meaning. Okay. So when we're talking about the social aspect of traditional learning, there's this one word that should kind of come to your mind. Um, people who are born in the same year, who are the same age group. How do you say that in English? There's one word for that. And um, it's good to think about this word as you're kind of going into this. And you'll see why. So what's the word? It starts with a C. I'll give you a little bit of a hint. Um, so members, what do you call... A person who is the same age as you. Okay. <laughs> Chai and Kip says, I'm ha very honest of you, Chai and Kip says, I'm having a pack of spicy macaroni while watching this class right now. Yes, if you were in my physical classroom, Chai and Kip, I would say, stop eating and pay attention <laughs> but I can't do that right so I don't know if you're going to stop or not all right it's a short word there it's called a cohort okay your cohort is um, your uh, same age group is your cohort okay so social aspect of traditional learning all right um, and I think Carolina said this earlier. So um, traditional schools facilitate the um, social development of um, students by creating um, an interactive environment with cohorts okay so that would be my topic sentence here traditional schools facilitate um, f you know the word facility right so facility is a place where you can do some kind of activity um, the verb to facilitate facilitate means um, to create an environment for that action so it's kind of like saying uh, enable okay um, or you could also <clears throat> think about it like make possible if you don't know these words okay so traditional schools facilitate which means make possible the social development of students by creating an interactive environment with cohorts same age groups okay so um, here um, again I want to explain right uh, indeed the traditional uh, environment of having um, 30 students of the same age working together sharing their thoughts and emotions plays a significant uh, role in the uh, development or in the maturation um, of um, cognitive and emotional health okay now you know some of you are thinking but I don't know those words Adrian how what do I do um, in the IELTS I can't write those words it's not about the words okay there are easier ways to write these words I will show you in just a second um, it's about the ideas so it's you're not trying to copy the words that I'm using although you should learn them uh, you always want to learn new vocabulary 
Um, but it's the concept, most importantly, especially if your IELTS exam is tomorrow, like for uh, Lamia, then uh, Lamia, I don't expect you to uh, learn the word maturation, um, but you can use the word development, okay, or growth, okay, can replace maturation. Uh, cognitive, um, you can replace that with mental or brain. Emotional, you should know, okay? If you're going for a band seven or an eight, you should know the word emotion, emotional. All right? Ooh, how did I misspell that? That bad, mental. Okay, so there are easier words that you can choose. Um, the idea here is to express uh, the same uh, concept, okay? So here I have my topic sentence, now I have my explanation. Uh, traditional schools facilitate the social development of students by creating an interactive environment with cohorts. Indeed, the traditional environment, uh, the traditional uh, classroom, I don't want to repeat environment, of having uh, not 30, <laughs> but 30, let's correct that, this is why we review 30 students of the same age working together and sharing their thoughts and emotions uh, plays a uh, play. Yeah, it's better. Play a significant uh, role in the maturation of cognitive and emotional health. Um, in the same uh, grade uh, six class, as previously mentioned, Pupils uh, form friendships by working together uh, on equations in the class, and these can turn into uh, lifelong bonds. Sure or connections. If you don't know the word bonds, you can say connections. Okay. Uh, sure. All right. Uh, notice how I'm using the same example as in body paragraph one to make that connection, okay? Um, using, this is kind of a tip or a trick, if you can effectively use the same example to uh, make a stronger connection between your two body paragraphs, that's a really good idea. That's a very good writing uh, strategy. Um, it's uh, uh, kind of, I would say, advanced uh, form of writing strategy uh, to give more coherence to your writing, okay? Plays, indeed. Okay, just some small corrections there. All right, uh, I don't need a connecting or concluding sentence for the conclusion because the conclusion is a conclusion, okay? Um, but I can, I can say this is another reason that um, traditional uh, teaching uh, is uh, going to be around e even after 2050. Okay, so I could write that. It's not a, super important because my conclusion will kind of say that as well. Um, so now I can write my conclusion. And the conclusion has three parts. Um, it has uh, the points restated, has the argument strengthened, and it has a take home message. Okay, so I'll write this, just kind of pay attention and then you'll see how it all comes together. So points restated, traditional teaching is efficient and it's important for social development, right? So in conclusion, uh, traditional uh, classrooms uh, play a vital role for uh, effective 
teaching and learning as well as um, social development. And then argument strengthened. Therefore, I strongly uh, disagree that this uh, type of uh, instructions or this type of uh, learning will uh, disappear over the course of the next uh, three decades. And then my take home message, okay? Ultimately, uh, humans will always strive for the uh, most useful form of uh, learning and currently this is still the uh, traditional um, school environment okay so yeah i mean okay we want to learn online there's advantages to that and disadvantages and we want to use software and there's um advantages disadvantages but i do think that most of us will agree that um generally speaking and now not just thinking about adults but also thinking about children uh the most effective or most uh useful form of learning is still the physical classroom it's no wonder that during covid so many university students were very upset that they could not go to their university classes a lot of students did not feel that it was fair to pay the same amount of money uh, to learn online in a virtual classroom as going into the actual physical class. Why? Because we feel that there's a greater value in the physical classroom. So um, keep that in mind, okay? Um, don't argue with reality. Uh, that makes for a very difficult essay. Okay, uh, students, let's, uh, let's kind of read this together here. Okay, and I can see that a lot of you are writing more and more. Nice writing, Baljeet and Sanantha. Okay, um, so Sanantha says, the way to answer writing past two should be agreement and disagreement, right? Can we be neutral? No, Sanantha, writing a neutral essay is usually not a good idea. Usually does not make, it because it's not persuasive, right? Then what's the value of the writing? If it's neutral, it has little to no value for the reader, okay? So neutral essays, they do exist, but they're less common, okay? In this case, if somebody were to genuinely ask me, you know, do you think traditional classrooms will disappear by 2050? I would honestly say to them, no, I don't think so. I think we will still have schools and I think that our grandchildren will still attend a physical classroom. They will actually still walk to the classroom and learn. Um, so here we go, let's read this, okay? Again, let's read the, um, the question as well, okay? So the typical teaching situation of a teacher and students in the class will not exist by the year 2050. To what extent do you agree or disagree? The traditional style of classroom teaching has been a part of global culture for centuries. Millions of students go to school, sit in class with their peers, and learn specific subjects from their instructors. This classic learning has been challenged by advancements in technology, such as learning virtually or with software assistance. I completely disagree with the notion that the traditional classroom will no longer exist after three decades because the efficiency and social aspect of face-to-face -face learning with peers is a crucial part of human development. Students in physical schools can gain much information quickly because they are forced to concentrate on their studies through supervision and group work. 
The teacher in a classroom can make sure that pupils are not distracted by off-topic activities and working together with classmates ensures that each student is motivated to learn new knowledge. Indeed, in a grade six classroom, when a student is drawing sketches in their notebook, I can simplify this, sketching in their notebook, the teacher will regain their attention by giving them a warning. This level of efficiency is one reason that traditional learning will persist. Traditional schools facilitate the social development of students by creating an interactive environment with cohorts. Indeed, the traditional classroom of having 30 students of the same age working together and sharing their thoughts and emotions plays a significant role in the maturation of cognitive and emotional health. In the same grade six class, as previously mentioned, pupils form friendships by working together on equations in class and these can turn into lifelong connections. This is another reason that traditional teaching is going to be around even after 2050. In conclusion, traditional classrooms play a vital role in effective teaching and learning as well as social development. Therefore, I strongly disagree that this type of learning will disappear over the course of the next three decades. Ultimately, humans will always strive for the most useful form of learning, and this currently uh, is still the uh, traditional school environment. Ultimately, humans will always strive for the most useful form of learning, and currently, this is still the traditional school environment. Okay, good, makes sense. All right, happy with the essay. Uh, now I can uh, worry about uh, either the next part of the IELTS exam or if this was the last part of my IELTS exam, then I can finish with a smile and go home. All right, um, students, uh, that was it for this class. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me and hopefully most of you were concentrating at least 95% of the time. Um, you've got me worried a little bit now. Uh, and uh, for more lessons like this and for lots more help, visit us at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gileshelp.com for general IELTS. That's where you will find uh, tons more information about the writing section. Harpreet, welcome to our group of members or wel welcome back to our group of members. Good writing, James. Nice writing, Baljeet, uh, throughout the class. Uh, keep it up, okay? I will be back in a little less than uh, half an hour uh, with uh, listening uh, section three and four, which will be fun. We're using a new interactive piece of software for that to make it a bit more uh, exciting. And uh, again, uh, students, check out our websites. Uh, so um, aehelp.com, Academic IELTS, it's here. Click that big red button that's just right there. Uh, it's a one-time payment, lifetime access. I'm a British Council agent. Uh, we are an IDP uh, in British Council Test Registration Center as well. So uh, you are in very good hands with us. Uh, General IELTS, G-I-E-L-T-S, help.com. Uh, that's here. Again, click this big red button to join our premium package. It's well worth it. Uh, and again, come back in uh, about 25 minutes. Uh, I will be here um, and we will use uh, our websites uh, for uh, listening parts three and four. Carolina, thank you for moderating. And uh, thank you for your participation and support, members. See you shortly. Bye for now.